I think what most excites me is, is that we are, we're brave enough to jump into this new space. Uh, and we were one of the first to jump into the space in 2012 before many people were doing it. We we're, were one of the first in and it, it, it takes a lot of bravery, it takes a lot of um, willingness to fail. Our name means innovation in energy, but you know what it, what it really means to me is that we're looking at ways to move the needle in terms of how we think about energy, how we use energy, how we generate energy. Invenergy is a very uh, entrepreneurial place. We uh, develop wind, thermal, storage, uh, natural gas facilities all across the world. Right now we're at this inflection point in the, on the grid. We've got more and more renewables coming on. We have requirements through the RPS in different states for renewables. That inherently brings in more fluctuation and you have a growing aversion to GHGs which means that you need to increase generation in a clean way. And if you can't regulate that solar or wind with gas, you've got to use something else. And that's where we look at storage as the way to do that. Battery storage is used to really fine tune the frequency signal of the grid. Um, you can only have so much generation from fossil plants, natural gas plants, wind farms, solar farms, hydro plants, that is a very static uh, generation or megawatt level. What storage provides to the grid is a very quick response to control that frequency signal. I think the best analogy for energy storage is the same reason why all of us want smartphones. Uh, we want smartphones not for the phone capability, but for all those wonderful apps that come with, with the phone. And that's what storage allows. Storage allows for all sorts of unique services. Uh, it's not about shifting power from the off-peak to the on-peak. So the way we've started using it is, is a regulation standpoint. And that's been a function of what the market is asking for. Um, we're in the business of providing our customers with what they want, and in this case, PJM wanted a fast response resource that was able to provide the regulation they need in a more efficient way. Battery storage, especially at scale with a 31 and a half megawatt project in Illinois and a 31 and a half megawatt project in West Virginia, it gives us that scale to balance the frequency. It's a unique way of thinking about it. It's a unique way of uh, potentially running the system going forward. It's a unique way of providing different services for customers, whether it's uh, reliability, grid hardening. Um, I think we're only starting to scratch the surface of what energy storage is capable of. What PJM found was that by using energy storage to provide regulation, that they were able to offset up to three megawatts of traditional regulating resources with one megawatt of battery resources. So that what that means is it means an overall more efficient procurement of megawatts in the marketplace. We're the first ones. We're the first market movers. Uh, we're the first to be deploying this new technology uh, and looking for uh, different ways to deploy it going forward. The PJM control signal that dispatches our batteries, whether it's a charge or a discharge, comes into the control center here, into our generation management system, which is a centralized SCADA system, which then relays that signal onto the battery monitoring system, our battery management system. The main purpose of this unit that we're standing in right now is uh, to provide power, uh, to push and pull power for the regulation market for America's power grid. The, the unit we're sitting in is container 11. There are four battery strings. Each battery strings has 35 modules. Each module has six cells. So we're a, a full service developer. What we'll do is we'll go to our customers, we'll understand what their needs are, and then we'll develop the project from the ground up. So what that means is we speak with um, the battery suppliers, we speak with the inverter suppliers, and all the different component suppliers, and we bring that together and create a solution that meets the customer's needs. As a company, we haven't settled on you know one manufacturer or one application for these batteries. There's so many different options and I like that because it represents a challenge on the operations side right 
you're trying to standardize your whole fleet of different manufacturers, different battery technologies, different applications, but yet you still have to maintain, maintain these systems. You still have to meet federal requirements and local requirements and utility requirements. So it's challenging. With energy storage, we're limited only by our imagination as to where it's going to take us next. The future of energy storage is really dictated by the momentum that we have going in the industry right now. We're moving away from the model that we created over a hundred years ago of centralized generation, transmission, and distribution to one that's more networked. And if we're going to realize that future, if we're going to fully take advantage of that networked model and all of the benefits that it has from a reliability perspective, from a clean energy perspective, then we need energy storage. We need those types of solutions, not just the hardware, but the software and the intelligence to make that happen.